My name is Dana Harris Seeger. Welcome to my studio at Visual Philosophy. I want to talk today about printmaking paper and what I use, what I feel like is suitable for different types of printmaking. Um, some papers can, can overlap and you can use them for different uh, methods. For instance, the pretty standard paper that I think everyone's heard of is Reeves BFK, R-I-V-E-S and then BFK, and it comes in a couple different weights, but it's really good for just a variety of printmaking. It's a cotton rag paper, and it doesn't have a lot of sizing, but it does have enough so you can soak it for intaglio etchings. Um, you can use it for this one. In this case, I've done screen printing on it, uh, multiple color screen prints, and um, this is also a screen print, but you can use it for block printing. Um, it's, it's very durable. It's, uh, it will take a lot of abuse. Like I said, you can submerge it in water for etching um, and monotype. So this is a really versatile printmaking paper. Um, for screen printing specifically, what I like to use is smooth tooth papers as well. So the, the Reeves has a little bit of a soft hand, so it's kind of um, fibrousy. But something like a Bristol paper, a Bristol board, is very smooth. It's almost like hot press watercolor paper. Um, so it's really a smooth surface. And I like it because it's stiff, so with the water-based ink that I use, it doesn't warp. Um, with the repeated screen printing. Um, and then I can layer collage up. I can even do some water media on it. But this is really good for things that um, kind of the ink sits on top. I wouldn't recommend it for etching because you can't really submerge it and have it soak into uh, the, you know, go down into the grooves of the plate like you would for a Reeves BFK. So it's really great for screen printing. Um, you can use it for lithography, but it might be a little bit slick and smooth. Um, Bristol board, Bristol paper. Um, another thing that's really good, since screen printing is so versatile, I also like to use handmade paper. This one's made from mallow, which is like a weed that you find on the side of the road or in your garden when you don't want to and it's been calendared so it's very smooth on one side and it makes really great paper for all kinds of um, applications like screen printing. This one's a four color process screen print. So I printed four different colors over it and you can see it held up very nicely. It's also cool that you can use it um, then to collage on something else or mount it onto a backing paper too if it gets a little thin. Um, in this case, one of the uh, places had a little hole so that's another option for a handmade paper. The Reeves BFK comes in a variety of colors, like this buff color also comes in gray, and it comes in a couple different weights. So you can get a lightweight, and um, that might be better for woodcuts or relief prints, but I like the kind of stiffer one, the heavier weight one, because it's really good for well, screen printing and lithography, which is what I like to do mostly. So for litho, you can use a smoother tooth paper because you don't have to soak it. And um, it, you do want it to have some absorption though because that's how the oil-based ink will sit on the surface. So the, the Reeves BFK is a really good choice for lithography. So is a brand called Stonehenge. I like that one because again, it it doesn't have as much sizing as the Reeves, so when you soak it, sometimes it starts to um, kind of come apart at the edges, but it's really great for lithography because you, you can print it dry. Another okay choice for screen printing is just cardstock. So this is like, um, I think a standard just sort of cardstock that you get from the, the office supply store. Um, you can also use like a lighter weight watercolor paper. Um, screen printing is nice because you, you can use a variety of materials. You can use something that's a little bit more textural, something that's smooth, um, and it's not as fussy as some other methods. 
but because the ink just sits on the surface, you can use something as simple as a, just like a regular kind of office paper. And then for these, that's a little bit about screen printing um, and some of the planographic methods. This is from a jelly plate print. And again, I used, I think this is Bristol, but cardstock will work, especially if you're using water-based inks. Um, th these are a really great choice because they're a little bit thicker and um, even watercolor paper, hot press or cold press watercolor paper is good for jelly plate because they don't, again, need to absorb the ink or soak up the ink. The ink is just sitting on top like a monotype. Um, and because the plate is flexible, then the paper can be quite stiff. So unlike traditional monotypes where you would want maybe a Reeves BFK that had a little bit of give to it, sponginess. The Bristol makes a really nice paper and watercolor too, with all its sizing in it, um, for the jelly plate prints. And again, I think this is just a card stock, uh, printed jelly plate printed on just card stock from the office store. Um, this has, you can see, one of the things I like to do with etchings, this is a solar plate etching, is print it onto a thin Japanese paper, like a uh, mulberry paper or rice paper, a sumi paper. This is called kozo. Um, it's a mulberry paper that's very long grained, long and fibrousy. So it's very tough. It can withstand a lot of different um, applications. But then I'll mount it or adhere it to another uh, backing piece of paper. And if you do it at the same time that you print, then it's called chine collé, where the paper and the print and the backing paper all go through the press at the same time and get adhered um, to each other. But I'll do, do a video on that because that's a whole other technique. Uh, but you can see that that allows for some transparency, which is really nice. And that's one of the reasons why I like this, uh, these types of of Japanese papers because they're very translucent, but they come in varying degrees of translucency. They're also really good for screen printing and wood block printing. This is a laser wood block. And it has, you can see that there's a lot of detail in there. You can capture the fine wood grain. Um, you can also see it from the back as you're uh, burnishing. So I like these papers are specifically um, made for this type of printmaking, wood block and relief printing. So they're ideal for that. Um, they, but you can use them for screen printing. Again, you can use them not submerged in water, but you can dampen them using a damp pack, like a little humidifier, if you wanted to use it for um, one of your etchings. And that's a traditional practice that people do. And then last, I wanted to talk about one other type of paper that I am using a lot these days, which is Duralar, or a sort of a plasticky Mylar. The Duralar is the brand name, but it's it's basically like a drafting vellum, and it's super smooth. It is made to, sometimes they're, they're made to get uh, water-based, except water-based media. In this case, this is a water-based screen print. Um, but you can also get some that are not made for water-based materials but I like this kind because I use water-based media. And they're very translucent, so you can see when you put them behind each other that they, they show a lot um, of the previous layer underneath, and I like layering things up that way. So these are really convenient for different types of planographic printmaking, like screen printing or lithography, um, things that, again, you don't have to soak in and then force into the grooves like etching. So that should give you a little bit of an idea of the different types of paper that you can use for printmaking and you know pros and cons of each, um, how you can use different ones. And if you've got something in your stash that you have been wanting to use, um, now hopefully you know the best method to use it.